Howdy folks, welcome back to Black Sheet Meadow. I'm Brent. And I'm Amber. And we got a good one for you today. We have a great one today. So if y'all been following our channel for any amount of time, y'all know that for the year 2023, Amber and myself grew a lot of our own food, something like 80% worth. Yep. And while it's still a little bit early to kickstart that this year, we're not gonna press as hard on all the different food groups like we did last year, but we're still gonna grow a lot of our own. Uh, chickens included. Mm -hmm. We're going to kind of focus more on the things that we really enjoyed having on the homestead that were, um, I don't want to say easier, but that the benefit definitely way outweighed the labor intensity mm -hmm. and the things that we just really, really enjoyed doing and maybe try to branch out on the varieties of those things. So I'm really looking forward to that. We're not going back to store-bought chicken. No, we are definitely not going back to store-bought chicken. Our chicken came out fantastic all year last year and we really want to increase that and last year we did three batches mm -hmm. this year we're only going to do two batches but they're going to be larger number of chickens mm -hmm. so the the game plan here is is obviously we're in the middle of february it's still a little bit too early for us to get our uh, produce in the ground our vegetable crops in the ground so we're going to focus on getting the chicken tractors ready which i only have two weeks before our first batch of meat birds get here this year they will be here and we're going to do two batches 30 bat 30 chickens per batch and for our size chicken tractors, I see a lot of homesteads out there. They have like a five by five or an eight by eight chicken tractor. Most of the time it's moved by hand. Um, we've chose to use the mule to move ours. Our, our chicken tractors are seven by 12. And truthfully on a seven by 12 chicken tractor, that's 84 square feet. I personally would not put more than 15 chickens in that chicken tractor at a time. Would you agree? Especially when it gets closer to that five week mark, mm -hmm. the manure load is just so heavy. It's just it can't be healthy yeah and i don't think even if you were moving it two times a day it just still the that's manure a, load is just that's a lot going on in there and i just think for the healthy quality of the bird the life of the bird having them into having 15 in each tractor is just going to be and better overall 15 birds in 84 square feet i want to say that comes out like right off the top of my head it's like five and a half six square foot per bird uh, so on a 24 hour period, I think that's really sufficient. Um, it's just enough time for them to knock the grass down. Um, the, the, the grass can actually come back in the fall. We may be able to move that chicken tractor on that same ground once again in the fall. So, uh, so anyways, we, just so second chicken tractor is pretty much the same build. We didn't film yeah. the building of this tractor because we already have a video filming it and it's kind of boring. But if you want to know, I'll link it up here and you can go watch that. He's going to go over the details on how he's kind of beef this one up mm -hmm. things that we found that we just wanted a little bit better from the first one to this one so maybe give you some ideas on yours with that said when it comes to beefing it up i can tell you the number one thing that was alarming for me this chicken tractor build versus the first one is the first one for granted we did have a lot of material that was here on the homestead already that we used on the first tractor but the first tractor, I want to say we were in it like something like under two hundred dollars. It definitely under two hundred dollars. This I want chicken to say it was tractor to that you see here behind us, I'm in well over three hundred and fifty. And I think everyone, everyone in the United States at least, can gripe about the inflation numbers that we've seen, and uh, it's just ridiculous. But it right. is what it is. We're not going back to store bought chicken. <laughs> we are definitely not going to store bought chicken, and these will last us for several years. I'm gonna say six to seven years is what I'm expecting out of these tractors. We're gonna go over some detail here in just a second. So you wanna get into that? Let's get into it. All right, so on this chicken tractor, it started off the framework, obviously seven by 12 for the base. Uh, it starts off as a basic two by four build. Uh, the one thing that I did this year over last year is I really beefed up these corners. If Amber can get in here. You can see on the corners, not only do I have a horizontal and a lateral two by four, I've actually taken a two by four and strapped over the top of it and then overlapped the, the corner where the two by fours meet. So there's no perfect edge. Everything is screwed and put together. This is like a block in the corner. I guess the most important thing for this is, is if I was just moving this by hand, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but we are moving this chicken tractor with the mule. So it's got a lot more torque. It pulls on it a lot harder. Uh, it really, I didn't destroy the first chicken tractor, but I could definitely tell it was way too much strain on the corners. So this is just something for an improvement here. Uh, while we're down here, I would like to mention the eyelets, the, uh, the eye bolts here at the bottom. Uh, once again, I think I, I might have a clip for this where y'all gonna watch. I move this with a ratchet strap, hook it onto the ball of the mule and drag this chicken tractor on a new square every single day. Um, I like to mention here on the hardware cloth, 
please do not build a chicken tractor with chicken wire. Um, chicken wire, I guess, is fine in certain instances. Um, here on our homestead, we have way too many predators. We lost several chickens one year to a fox that just blew straight through chicken wire. At least go through a half inch hardware cloth. Um, there's several other materials out there, but I definitely recommend something more robust than chicken wire. So let's get on the inside. All right, so here on the inside of the tractor, I don't know if the video is going to be too dark in here or not, but uh, same build as we did last year. This is all cattle panel. I've got three uh, separate pieces of cattle panel. I think I had to cut one edge off a of cattle panel to make it fit in the, the 12 foot length. Um, but once again, we used a hardware tape like you would see maybe in an HVAC for holding duct work up. Uh, we used the hardware tape to latch the cattle panels to the 2x4. Uh, one thing I'm going to mention with this 2x4, I, I say we're going to get 6 to 7 years out of these chicken tractors. With that said, the biggest failure point that I see on this is going to be the rotting of the wood because the wood is constantly exposed to moisture on the ground. I've seen people do a few different things with some PVC. I've got a couple ideas that I'm going to experiment with here in the near future. I probably really should have tried it on this chicken tractor, but I didn't. So um, if I can make a chicken tractor build in the future where the base is not going to rot out, I'm going to I'm gonna make sure it works first before I do, do a video on it, but I think this is going to be the biggest failure point. Uh, outside of that, hardware cloth, at least up, this is 48 inch hardware cloth, it's coming up 48. I don't need a raccoon or something coming underneath the tarp that's on the outside and crawling in through the cattle panel on the top. Uh, we didn't have any problems with this in the past, so I would say 48 inches high uh, to keep the predators out. And uh, once again, it doesn't necessarily have to be a fox or a raccoon. You could have a neighbor's dog or a cat that wants to eat your, eat your chickens more than you do. So. Uh, Keep your chicken safe. That's pretty much the main thing here. Uh, let's move back to the outside. All right, so on the canvas or the tarp on the outside of this chicken tractor, uh, basically I went to a local ag store and I found a heavy duty tarp that was uh, multicolored. So it's black on the inside, silver on the outside. I want the silver to reflect the sunlight. It keeps it a lot cooler. One of the first tarps that we had on our original chicken tractor was all black and it was just way too hot. That thing was like an oven on the inside. So I highly recommend a reflective or a very light colored canvas or tarp on the outside. I would like to mention too, the zip ties are also UV resistant to where they, they're not going to get brittle and break off. Um, these chickens that we grow here, and it's going to depend on everybody's climate, but the first two weeks that we have our chickens, they're going to be in a brooder box inside the barn. So weather is not going to be a huge factor for them. But we do here in central Texas, we do have some cooler weather potential in the month of April. Uh, and that's going to be right when our chickens are four to five weeks old. So I've got the tarp going from base to base as a wind block. I can always add wind blocks on the ends of either side. Vice versa, we also could possibly have really high temperatures, you like 90s in the month of April here in central Texas. And if I need more airflow, I keep one side of my tarp where I can zip it up and get a cross flow with wind through here too. Um, you know, we talk about it time and time again. The, the biggest problem with any of the chicken tractors is how fast they put manure on the ground. Uh, so yeah, the more airflow you can get across it, the better off they are. Just keep that in mind for, for air control. All right, so back to the cost of things, right? Uh, that's probably been, once again, it's everybody's sticker shock. Everything seems to have doubled in price in the past two to three years. We're not telling you guys anything new. You're going to the grocery store, you're going to stores, you're seeing that the prices of things are just increasing. So when we were shopping for materials for this, it was really because we had, a year ago we had just built one so it was very prevalent how drastic some of the prices had changed so i got lucky we were in a home depot one day and i found a corral board on i think it was on a one of they call it like one of their clearance but it was like a defective it had some warpage to it yeah it was they put them in the center of the aisle and they're spray painted so yeah. they're half off or but i got a corral board a 16 foot corral board cheaper then I can get a one by four, which is what I made the door out of on the last chicken tractor. Yes. So look for the deals like that. I took the crowd board, made my door. We took a piece of outdoor smart board, laminated the smart board over the corners uh, to where I don't have a bunch of hardware for the, the metal brackets for the corners on everything. Mm -hmm. We do still have hinges, but once again, this is another piece of scrap. This is our door handle. And we use this on all of our chicken coops, the turkey coop, the other chicken tractor. We looked at Home Depot today 
and a handle was seven dollars and fifty cents yeah the cheapest handle was so, four dollars and fifty cents and it was a chintzy little not gonna work for what we needed it to <laughs> barely stamp steel yeah this is a piece of scrap lumber this is a half by one inch i want to say you can buy an eight foot board of this for like a dollar fifty this is probably eight inches worth it's still almost free yeah still what i'm relatively saying is effective. really focus on things that you have around your homestead to cut the cost of production uh the whole homestead thing that's the idea is you don't want it to cost what your groceries do in the store you want to be able to do things cheaper and really pr primarily quality you want the higher quality but uh it's not the higher quality is not doing you any good if you're paying double to get the same product so exactly keep it down folks but uh, the, the other thing that we wanted to mention was that the construction of this just in one year of all the projects that we've had we can tell that our craftsmanship oh correct. has improved drastically Dickly. from one year to the next yeah. this one is built just the cuts and the measurements and the way things fit together way better over one year so as you're doing this don't feel bad if it's not perfect yeah when you do it again it's going to be better <laughs> the chickens do not care i no, promise you they don't they absolutely don't <laughs> so in the meantime folks we encourage y'all you know get off the system start producing your own food uh my favorite word become ungovernable yes sir in the meantime we'll see y'all next week we'll see you next week <laughs>